How to create an ARC server and port forwarding for it in under 10 minutes, coming up next. Alright you guys, so welcome to my ARC server creation guide and super fast port forwarding for Google Fiber. As we jump right in through here, all you're going to need really fast is to know that this is for Windows only at the moment. I don't deal with anything else. The program that we're going to be using is Arc Server Manager. The link in the description down below will look something like this. Also, I have a direct download link in the description for that and the Steam CMD client. It'll just be a direct that direct link right here. All right, now what you're going to do after you have those couple of files, first things first, you need to make sure you have at least 25 gig of storage space on the, uh, for the server to download onto your computer or external drive, wherever you're wanting to put the little bugger. Now, after you have those two f files downloaded, I recommend installing them both into the same folder or file uh, uh, section. That way it just keeps everything uh, in the same location and you're not fishing around for stuff. Uh, then uh, you can also install the server into that same file location. It'll look something like this. As uh, you pull it all up, I have everything right on my E drive under shooter game uh, where the server installed and then the Steam client files are right here for the server. That's what those are. The Steam CMD, that's what's going to drop those in there. Jumping right into this as well, you're going to create your profile name. This is not what your server will look like as it states when you hover above it uh, when you search for it on Steam. That is going to be down here in the admins bar. So first things first, what you're going to do is find the file location. If you have a current server that you want to use this client with, all you're going to do is just find it wherever you have it installed on your uh, PC with that little button there. And then you're just going to click save. Boom. It'll boot it up right in there. If you don't have one already, this does the whole thing for you. You're just going to click the refresh button on what the latest version is. You're going to click upgrade. It's going to install it wherever you have the file location set. Again, I would recommend putting it into the file folders where you have Arc Server Manager and uh, the Steam CMD client installed. Uh, that way it just keeps everything in the same spot. It's not having to work quite as hard to find everything. Now, scrolling down through here, uh, just as a heads up, before you go into things down here below, that's going to have a bunch of the rules and how you want your server to be set up. This does take anywhere from 30 minutes to up to around 12 hours to install everything. It's basically reinstalling the entire game as for a server would be. And so just be aware of that. So while that's downloading, we're going to jump over to the port forwarding section. So Google Fiber, what you're going to look for is your page should look something like this. You'll have your everything broke down. If you have your network box, storage box, if you have TV boxes, fabulous, go right ahead with that. Then you're gonna click on the network box. It's gonna pop up something of, like this, wireless services. And then what you're going to do is click on port forwarding, go down to where you will see local hosts. When the port forwarding page pops up, you're going to click on new entry, and then you're going to click on local host you're going to find your device whatever you're looking for uh, select it and then you're going to find the protocols for it now here is where it gets a little tricky the uh, google fiber has everything nice and streamlined for a bunch of different types of games arc is not on here yet you're going to go to user defined now i'm going to cancel out and go into mine to show you exactly how it's supposed to look after you've clicked on user defined it'll pop up this screen to where it'll give you the name of the service that you want. You're going to go to new protocol. I'm going into uh, the top one here on mine just to show you what I have. Then you're going to create the TCP protocol there. Leave the source port as any. This is the important thing. This is what threw me off all the entire time. It took me a week to figure out that all I did was just I didn't leave that as any. Destination port single 27015. This is so the ARC server manager can communicate directly through that. You're going to click OK. I'm clicking cancel because I already have it set up. Then you're going to go down to create another protocol underneath the same game there or the same click new server port. I'm going to click on the pencil here to show you what it's supposed to look like. You're going to create a UDP one next. Leave source port as any. Once again, that is very important. Destination port 
27015. You're clicking OK. I'm clicking Cancel. Then, uh, once again, you're going to click OK. I'm clicking Cancel here so I don't mess anything up. Then it will take you back here to this page. It'll show you the local host name, the massive address, which I'm going to block out here because I don't like people getting into my stuff. And then you're going to see protocols down here. It should just say the ARC Survival Evolve server, TCP any, 27015, uh, UDP any, greater than 27015. Then you're going to go down to the same exact thing, creating a new protocol, add user defined. After you click user defined, it's going to pop up another service name here. You're going to name it Steam Server. You're going to go down to service ports, create new, again, TCP, source ports, again, super important, leave as any, destination port, single port, uh, then four sevens, four, one, two, three, four. Same thing, uh, new server port. Then you're going to create a UDP version. Once again, UDP there. Source port says any. Again, super important. Destination ports, single. Then you're going to put four sevens. Seven, 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 seven. Only four sevens in there. That's the port that Steam uses to communicate through their server process. Then you're going to hit OK. I'm going to hit cancel. You're going to hit OK there. I'm going to hit cancel again. It'll pop you back up to this page. Once again, you should see both down here. Click OK. I'm going to hit cancel. Then you should be able to see this pop up. Your network object, your local IP address, protocols underneath which, where you should see Arc server, Evolved server, TCP, UDP, both 27015, 27105, any. Uh, then the Steam server, same thing. TCP, UDP, any, any, seven, 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 four sevens there as well. Then you're going to click apply. I'm going to hit cancel. Ta-da. That's done. It should work now. Next, firewall settings. Basically, you're going to go to create new, new rule, rule type, program, next, program path, browse. You're going to find your uh, server here. Click on the server. I'm going to click cancel there, then you're going to go up to rule type, then you're going to go to port. Yes, and you'll see the protocols and port button pop up here. You go there, you're going to create a TCP version, and then you're going to allow the 27015, and then you're going to go next, then you're going to allow this connection. That's the big one. That's a big one there too. Then domain private public. Then you're just going to name it whatever the heck you want. Then you're going to click finish. I'm going to click cancel. Uh, that way you don't like, bloat everything up here. Then you're going to do the same thing for the UDP. Yeah, I did not have to make uh, outbound rules for Steam on the server with four sevens. Remember that. Um, if yours doesn't work, and for some reason Steam isn't available for that, then do the exact same thing and create them for Steam. I already have Steam available on the inbound rules, and I already have a crap load of ARC ones available on here too. Now, I did have to create new inbound rules for the ARC server. So you're doing the exact same thing, inbound rules, um, and then you're just gonna do the same thing for the UDP. So rinse and repeat couple of times on that and then you should be good okay now at this point the server should be done downloading uh, it'll it should say installed here or stopped or offline or something like that and then the steam thing will, will say uh, offline or something like that as well now because I have mine running this is what it should look like if you have uh, now this is a, a big important thing as well if for any reason, now, if for any reason your server status says that it is still initializing after, all right, hold on. <clears throat> okay, so now back over to the Arc server manager here. Uh, we're going to manage all of our fun settings that we want everybody to be playing with in the game. Really quick, uh, server name, you're going to name it whatever the heck you want. 
server password what if you want a password for people to be able to get into the server or lock other people out so they can't just randomly join your server put in your password there admin password whatever the heck you want again this is your server port that looks familiar right the query port that's what this program is going to be using to communicate to your server with that's what you want uh, then local IP whatever the heck you want it there the number of players you want in your game I think the max players can go up to 127 in one game now remember the more players you have the more RAM you're going to use on your server too or the more that's going to be bogged down so be careful with that make sure you have a, the the proper uh, beastie equipment to handle uh, more people on your server I like to keep mine around 10 now anyways then after you have all your settings done you're going to click start and then you wait uh, when you click start this little bar should pop up something like this here now the up to the log memory is what's gonna uh, like right when you click start that's what where it says virtual memory there that's about where it's going to uh, stop for a little bit and then you literally have to wait uh, five to 20 minutes or so for your server to start some are faster, some are slower, depending on your computer speed. Uh, this time it took my server to start up 381 seconds, even. The last time it took me 680 uh, seconds to start up. So, this depends. As you can see where it says server status running and Steam status available. That's how you know that you are online and that your server is online and able to be detected by other people online as well. So, that those are important. If it is stuck in LAN mode, basically to where you can only find it in LAN or local area networks. Uh, you will see server status set to initializing still, and then Steam status unavailable is what will happen there. And that's how you know that the port forwarding and or the firewall settings just need to be tweaked a bit more as well. Then after you get your server time to pop up it looks something like that you can go over to your steam client click on view go down to servers and then you're going to have this little thing pop up right here that you'll be able to see all of the servers online now what i do is i'll go down here click on the arc server so that it uh, just shows up the arc servers alone you can tell that under internet my server that i've created is online then uh, it'll also pop up under favorites. I would recommend adding it to your favorites. Uh, that way you can find it. And then whenever you're in the server, all your friends can add it to their favorites and that sort of thing. It'll also pop up on land. This is something that threw me off completely uh, whenever I was not able to have it uh, working. Uh, we're gonna jump back over to the Arc server manager real quick. I find joining the session from here is not really advised. Uh, all across the board from what I found out so we're going to log into the game and as we're back into the game here you can see that we go to join game oh look there we are we're gonna go join game type in your password going in and we write back whenever we get back into the game Now, also be aware that loading into this game does take a while as well, depending on your hardware system and uh, setup that you have. So just be aware of that, that it does take a little bit to get into the game. All right, now really fast, as I boot up Task Manager here, you're able to see so, like what's how crazy everything is going on uh, and how much memory everything's using. Up here, you can see that up here you can see that yes shooter game is not responding but it is down in the bottom bar you can see that it's loading that that's what happens it's not dying on you just be patient with it it's not freezing um, I have the the smaller one is the game the upper ones the server if I'm not or the the higher one is the server if I'm not mistaken so and that just as how that works as it's just using up so much stuff and you can see he's like I, I'm, I'm pushing my I'm pushing my RAM here pretty good push my RAM here so we're into the game 
boot right back into the game here and we play around let's see all right so we have buddy wicked digit here he's just hanging out and uh, as he jumped into the server with us and just to see that show that he's a part of the server with us so yeah uh, he's not I think he's a little inactive at the moment that's okay you can see Snoopy or Raptor Blue Balls and Zippy. My rad T Rex here. T Money Love! Represent Baymax the So you can see yeah we got lots, we got lots of fun stuff here. It, it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool little setup. But yeah, that's how you make the server, and thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure you leave a like, subscribe down below. We love your support, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Holy adrenaline shots. Oh my gosh, I love that.